today's video, I'm going to share with you five different techniques on how to achieve a tone-on-tone -tone stamping. Let me turn the camera down and we'll get started. So tone-on-tone -tone basically means that you want to, let me just straighten out the camera a little here. It's a little crooked. There we go, I think that's good. All right, so anyway, tone-on-tone -tone means that you get the same color on the same paper. There's different variations of that, and I have found that out by trial and error. So I wanted to share that with my viewers today. Welcome to my channel, Stamping Simply with Maria. My name is Maria Robinson. I'm an independent demonstrator with Stamping Up here in the United States. I use um, mostly Stamping Up products, although I do sprinkle in a little other products once in a while because I like to use what I already have on hand um, rather than purchasing new items sometimes. So for this particular um, demonstration technique, I am using the Pumpkin Pie Stamp Pad, Classic Stamping Pad, and I'm also using Pumpkin Pie cardstock. Now, since we're not doing a card, I'm not worried about, um, you know, too much placement or what I'm doing here. It's not going to be pretty, but it'll, it'll show you the different techniques. I'm also using another favorite tool of mine. It's called the Stamparatus. And what I like about the Stamparatus is if I don't get a clear image stamped on my paper, the first time I can re-ink my stamp and stamp it again. So really nice. And also it's, it's really great for perfect placement all the time. Um, you have these two magnets here. You don't want to keep them together because they have a tendency that if they do go together, sometimes they'll crack and then that makes you cranky. We don't want that. The other thing I really like about the Stamparatus is um, for this particular greeting stamp set um, called The Biggest Wish, if you want to stamp birthday each time, the Stamparatus has this wonderful hinge system and you just move it down one hinge and you get a perfect alignment every time. You can also move it two if you want to get that look. So choice is yours, but it's really nice. And I like that about the Stamparatus. Now on the Stamparatus, I have a foam pad because I'm using photopolymer stamps and you wanna have a little cushion underneath. I am also using a grid sheet just to catch, because we're gonna be using embossing powder, I wanna be able to catch any of the embossing powder on that so I can just um, either put it back in my embossing powder container or I can just toss it in the garbage, you know. So to get started, I got I have some little cheat sheets here of what we're gonna do first. So first I'm going to do the just the ink pad and I'll show you what that looks like on the per, um, pu pumpkin pie. Sometimes you say that fast, it's hard to say. The pumpkin pie cardstock. Now one thing I want to tell you is that you will get a different look when you're using a lighter colored paper. So later in the video, I'm also going to show you on So Saffron, which is obviously a lighter shade. But for now, we're going to use the pumpkin pie on pumpkin pie paper cardstock. So I'm going to ink my stamp first. And then I have this little tool I made up myself. Um, if you go to Etsy, they have, it's called a Chucky tool, but this one I made up with a just a, a plastic container and I put some furniture pads on the bottom. It just helps to give it a good back rub. You can also use a dry erase board eraser. So see how I missed here? I didn't get, um, let me zoom that in because you may not be able to see it. I missed some parts here on the B, I, and R. So I'm just going to stamp that back up again, and I'll press a little harder, 
trying to get those areas that I missed earlier. Lift that up much better. Let's leave that open because we're going to use it. So that's the first one. That's just the ink on the paper, the pumpkin pie cardstock. You know, I guess the reason I keep saying paper before pumpkin is because I'm so accustomed to paper pumpkin, which is a monthly subscription that Stamping Up offers. It's a kit in a box basically, but that's not what this video is about. All right, so moving right along, that was the pumpkin pie ink pad. The next one that we're going to do is just Versamark. So let me clean off my ink, my um, stamp. One more thing I want to uh, mention is that I have something underneath this um, plate here because it gives you better leverage and this way you're not um, creating any type of uh, imbalance on the hinge which could eventually damage the hinge if you keep doing that. So I moved it down one and next we're going to do just the Versamark ink. I probably should have waited for my stamp to dry a little but I did not. All right, so let's stamp that. And if it doesn't come out, we'll just stamp it again. Not too bad. I'm just that B for some reason. I don't know if there's something wrong with the stamp or me. It's just not getting dark enough. So, and you'll see, um, I'm just going to zoom in a little. You'll see as time goes on, as this dries, it will darken up a little. Let me zoom back out so you can see what I'm doing here. All right, there we go. So that was just the Versamark. <coughs> Excuse me. Now we're going to move the hinge again. And I'm going to do Versamark with embossing powder. And this will give it a shine, so it's a different look. It all depends on what you're looking for in your card. But I like that you have options to do different things. And you achieve different looks by doing this. Now, of course, you can just stamp this and use this as a card background, which I may do. So that's Versamark. Um, let me just stamp them all with the Versamark. The next one that I'm going to do, going to do is, uh, let's see, all right, so we're going to move this down. The next one I want to do is the, I'm going to stamp, let me clean off my stamp first. And I'm just using my simple chamois, which was um, I wet it down with just plain water. There's nothing special about it. A second to dry. So we're going to use the pumpkin pie ink again. Put that down. Give it a good press up pretty good now I want to wipe this clean because I don't want the ink to get on my Versamark ink and that's what we're going to stamp over this with and we'll leave it in that same place now I'm inking it up with the Versamark which is a watermark type ink And I wanted to do the embossing powder all at once. I already used, before I started the video, my embossing buddy. Um, this is very old. Matter of fact, look at the bag that I had it in. It looks pretty old here. And um, I wish they had the year on this. I could tell you what year I have I've had this for. It's probably at least 
10, 12 years, maybe more. It's a long time, but they last forever. And then I also have this tray, which catches all of my excess embossing powder. Stamping Up just released the tray. It comes, you can buy it as a kit. It comes with a tray, a paintbrush, the embossing buddy, not this paintbrush, so this is a different paintbrush and uh, reverse tweezers. So I may end up buying that eventually. But for right now, this one's an old one, so it's working fine. All right, now that I talked, I don't remember what I did. All right, so we're gonna ink this with the Versamark. I don't remember if I did actually stamp down with it, but we'll do it again, it doesn't hurt. All right, now the last one we're going to do is plain ink and then use embossing powder. Now one thing I learned from doing just the ink with the embossing powder is you have to work pretty quickly because, and especially in the room I'm in because I have a fan going, so it's gonna dry pretty quickly. So let me move this down. The embossing, the um, Versamark ink seems to stay wet a little longer so it's still when you pour the embossing powder on it, it will still be sticky. Give that a good press. We'll see if it got the whole thing. And it did, so let me close this off so I don't get any embossing powder on it. Then we're going to work quickly and I'm going to pour the embossing powder first on the lower piece just because I want to make sure that it catches it. I'm going to try to avoid that second image that I stamped with the Versamark. But we may get a little bit on there. Stamping Up sells the embossing powders as a um, three sets. They have the metallics, which are silver, gold, and copper. And then they also have the another set of the black, white, and clear embossing powders. And they come in a set of three, so it's nice. That should be good. And I'm tapping off the excess embossing powder. So we'll bring our heat tool in. Um, one of the nice things about the heat tool is that it has two different settings on it. So depending on what your needs are, you may need a lighter heat setting or the heavier heat setting. I like to start it off the paper first so that it gets nice and warm and then I'll bring it onto the paper so it's um, a little quicker to heat and boss. So I love to watch this when it starts to melt though. It's pretty cool. I'll bring that up a little bit closer. Sorry about the noise. See how it's cool? You see how it's getting clear now? That's the embossing powder melting. And you want to keep moving the heat tool. You don't want to stay in one spot too long. Because what will happen is you can scorch the paper. I think I got every bit on there. So you can see a difference. This one was just the ink. Pumpkin pie on pumpkin pie paper cardstock. This one was the Versamark, so it's a little bit lighter. Then the last three were done with the embossing powder. This one was the embossing powder and Versamark ink. The next one was um, 
the pumpkin pie ink, the Versamark, and then the embossing powder. Then the last one is done with the pumpkin pie ink and the embossing powder. So it creates a different look and you can totally use this on a card where you stamped it the five different ways. All right, let's um, pour some of this embossing powder back into the holder here so I can use it on the next one. I got a little paintbrush hair in there. All right, let's pour that back in here. And this has a nice little hole so you um, can easily pour the embossing powder back in. What's nice about the stamping up one, this one doesn't have a little um, closure on here, but the stamping up one has a little knob where it closes it off so you can just brush all the excess down before you pour it into your container. And this stuff lasts a long time. this off and we'll work with the so saffron now and the reason I'm doing the lighter cardstock is to show you the difference on the lighter card cardstock I found that when you're I'm just gonna wipe this down with the embossing buddy I feel some little fragments of uh, embossing powder on here on you know, my sheet here. So as I was saying on the just the Versamark when you stamp with just the Versamark on the lighter color it doesn't seem to be as prominent as on the darker color. So I wanted to show you that. But let's go with the ink first. Again this is So Saffron on So Saffron cardstock. right here in front of me. <clears throat> Pull that up, move it down one notch. And now I will use just the Versamark. And you'll see here just a moment how much lighter it is on the lighter cardstock so I would say the Versa mark by itself is definitely better on darker cardstock it definitely shows up a lot better than on the lighter cardstock see you can I mean I'd have to really zoom this in quite a bit for you to even see the difference you can see a very, very subtle difference in that. And that's just the Versa mark. And of course, you can use that. You can use that for um, subtle backgrounds if that's what you're looking for. All right, where's the other one that I'm doing? So I've got my little cheat sheets here. So Versamark and embossing powder is next. All right, so we got Versamark. Now this one, I'm doing the Versamark. Oh, I should have, did I move it down? No, I did not move it down. The Versamark with the embossing powder is going to be next. put the embossing powder on it once not right now and the next one we're going to do the ink 
So let me clean this off. Dry that off a little. So this one's ink. And then we'll stamp. Good. Wipe that down. And next, we'll put Versamark over that, but first let me dry it. And we'll put the Versamark on that. So this is ink and Versamark, and then we'll add the embossing powder last. What the embossing powder does is it gives it a shiny look, so it's really, really nice, I think. And obviously it deepens the um, tint on the image also. And then lastly, let's clean this one more time, and we'll do the ink. and the embossing powder. Let me wipe that up down so it's a little drier. Got a little fuzz on there. All right, so now we're doing the ink. time just to be sure it's wet you can probably uh, well no I guess you'd be huffing on the stamp not on the image itself All right. let's move those aside right there this here bring the embossing powder in and sprinkle it on while it's still wet. Give it a little tap on the back, on the front, Got quite a bit on my finger. Let me brush some off of this part here since I don't want that embossed. Move that aside and we'll bring the heat tool back in. And watch the magic happen. And you want to keep moving the heat tool back and forth. Otherwise, you'll be scorching the paper or your fingers. It starts getting very hot. So you can see the magic happening. See how it's getting clear now? That's the embossing powder melting. So you can see quite the difference on this especially versus the, let me just close this ink pad. On the pumpkin pie versus the So Saffron paper, the cardstock, see how much lighter it is with just the Versa mark? And then it gets darker as it goes. So depending on which look you're looking for to achieve on your cards, depends on what you want to use. Again, just to recap, we've got the ink, the um, colored ink, the pumpkin pie and the so saffron, 
The second one we did was just the Versamark ink. The third one is the Versamark ink with the embossing powder. The fourth one was the Stampin' Pad ink, the colored ink. Then on top of that is the Versamark and then the embossing powder. Now this one's the darkest as far as I can see. Um, and then the last one is done with the colored inks and the embossing powder. So different look, you know, depending on what you're looking for. I hope this was helpful to you. If it was, please consider giving me a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber to my channel, I would so appreciate it if you would subscribe to my channel. It helps my um, me grow my um, channel and I can bring you more content and more videos that you're looking to um, for. And um, yeah, so and if you don't have a Stamping Up demonstrator, as I said, I'm a Stamping Up demonstrator here in the United States and I would love to earn your business. 99% um, of the products that I use are Stamping Up. Some, you know, sprinkled in there like this, obviously, was not a Stamping Up product but stamping up does sell that so if you are interested in purchasing that um i can certainly help you with that but uh if you have any questions please reach out to me my contact information can be found below in the video below the video also if you're interested in getting my newsletter i have started a newsletter and i'm trying to be good about getting that out every two weeks um but summers are a little tough so i do also do that certainly i'd love to have you as a new subscriber like my videos give me a thumbs up i really appreciate it thanks again guys have a great day bye